1984 as a 19 year old rookie this man struck out more than any rookie had in National League history took the league by storm 17 wins as a 19 year old that's what Dwight Gooden did 30 years ago. And Dwight Gooden is standing by with Kevin Burkhardt. Kevin? You know, it's kind of neat, Gary, because here we are this year, and I guess it started last year with Harvey. You're getting excited about some of the young Mets pitching, right? But, I mean, nothing nothing compared to this guy right here. Uh, Doc, it's good to see you again, first of all. Um, let me take us back to spring training. Let's start there, right? I mean, you have the incredible year in, in, in A ball when you strike out 300 batters, and then you go to spring training. Tell me what you were thinking heading into that season. It's a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, very nervous. Uh, playing against a lot of guys and be on the same for a lot of guys that I analyze. Uh, one guy was George Foster, who, you know, babe since that arrest in the 1970s had spring training in Tampa, where I grew up. My dad's taking a lot of spring training games. Yeah. But uh, as you mentioned, after the, the year I had the year before, uh, Dave, I played with David a little bit. And he told me it was going to bring me to spring training. And once he got the Bickley job and told me I was invited to our roster, he told me I'll make the team, but still I got to prove myself and not knowing what to expect. And I was just sucking everything in, enjoying every moment. And at the end of the day, I couldn't wait to tell my friends that uh, guys I would face on opposing teams in spring training. And plus the teammates I was around as far as like Keith Hernandez and George Foster and those guys getting to know them. What was it like as we see Ruiz's base hit? I mean, so Davey tells you, hey, I'm going to take you with you. You're going to make the team. But what, what did you think of that? You were so young. You know, what was your thought process when he told you that? When he told me that, uh, the situation where you don't really know whether to believe him or not, uh, you want to see what happens. And as spring training was going along, about halfway through spring, I was doing pretty good. And it was a lot of media attention. A lot of guys asked me at the old pitch, uh, what do you think? David said, you're going to make the team. But at that time, the front office wanted me to go back down to the minors because of my age. And I remember uh, Tim Leary came up, I guess, a couple years before and hurt himself at a young age. So he was afraid of that. And as we're getting closer to the season getting ready to start, a, a, lot, of the, a lot of anxiety started kicking in. You really want to make the team. But it was some doubt. Uh, am I ready uh, to do this or do I need any more seasoning? And I remember the last day of spring training, we're going to leave that day to break camp and open season in Cincinnati. About the fifth inning, David Johnson came up to me and said, congratulations, you made the team. And at that point, it was like an out-of-body uh, 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 experience, experience, and you don't know what to think. And I couldn't wait to call my dad and let him know. And I remember the night before, I didn't know whether to bring my bags or not. You know, I didn't want the veteran guy to say, look at this guy. He's cocky to bring his luggage. <laughs> and so I had my dad just put it in his car just in case. And so when I told him that I made the team everything, he brought the bags over. And I was very excited. Uh, but to see the look on my dad's face, because that was actually his dream at that time, as well as mine. And to share that moment with him was incredible. How did you tell him? I said, Dad, guess what? I said, uh, I made the team. I'm going up north with the team. And on the phone, he said, really? He said, you're, just, you're kidding, right? He said, no, I made the team. I need you to bring my bags over <laughs> to Al And uh, he said, all right, I'll see you soon, son. Doc, let's take us to the All-Star game of Candlestick in 84, right? And as Fernando Valenzuela pitched before you, Couple innings and it's your turn. What's your thought as you're walking onto that mound? Very nervous. I probably was more nervous the All Star game than I was my first start in Houston. Really? Yes, because uh, number one, you're in a clubhouse with so many guys that I analyze. Uh, been two years removed from high school and sharing that moment with those guys and been in the bullpen with so many great pitches and watching Fernando pitch. And I remember the phone ringing and it said, Good, and you're up. And you're there and you're kind of like, Hello. for like two seconds, you're kind of puzzled. Then you get up and you're throwing. I remember warming up, you know, once I got in the mount, got on the mound uh, between us warming up and Gary Carter, I was fortunate to have as my catcher. Yeah. And I remember him coming to the mound um, after the last warm-up pitch and saying, just have fun and just throw the ball like you did against us the first half of the season. And, you know, I got this three strikeouts. I think it was uh, Alvin Davis, uh, Chet Lemon, and Lance Parrish. Not that I keep a count, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that you think about that at all. <laughs> uh, but I remember getting those guys after the last strikeout. I remember going to the guy on Gary Carter. You know, I give you that old fist pump and give him a hug. And he said, "Wouldn't this be nice to do every fifth day?" Not really? knowing, not knowing that it was going to trade for him that November. Wow. But Here, here's the footage. Check this out. Have you seen this in a while? It's been a while. Uh, we're in a high fastball right there. Just a lot of nervous energy. We're trying to relax and have fun. Um, having Gary himself there it gave me a lot of energy and a lot of confidence and. Trotting off the mound right there, I had a feeling that was unbelievable and get goosebumps now just thinking about it. I was watching uh, some footage online and uh, Jim Palmer was on the broadcast. He said, hey, we're going to be in for a treat watching 19-year-old Doug Good. He wasn't kidding. Yeah, he was kidding. It was a lot of fun. And I remember uh, Mike Schmidt and Del Murphy uh, talking to those guys before as well. And to have guys like that tell me this would be nice to play behind you every fifth day wow. and guys that I analyzed and was pitching against, just a tremendous feeling and something I always remember. As Rollins draws a walk, uh, you know, tell me about just overall now before we let you go here tonight. Just 
you know, good and mania. You know, I mean, this the Shea, I say this place, but here, Shea Stadium was just, it was a scene like no other when you took the mound. The, the fans, the players knew it. What was it like for you when you took that mound? For me, it was a great feeling. Um, I had to do extra work between starts because I knew, you know, when I pitched, it wasn't just a start. Um, I knew, like, the fans was into it. I knew the crowds was bigger. Um, I, obviously, I wanted to do well to give my team a chance to win. But not only did I want to do well, I wanted to dominate. Uh, there's no disrespect to the other team, but at that day, I just knew it was my day to pitch. And the fans, I mean, they have no idea of the energy they gave me when I was pitching, uh, especially getting two strikes and everybody standing to their feet, clapping, wanting to strike out. And I used to work to my advantage because a you know, close pitch, the you know, umpire definitely was going to ring him up, and the hitter didn't want to go down looking. So I got to spend the strikes on a bit. So I owe the fans a lot of credit.